way your confessions to the community web jumpers in the tutorial. Today it's all about making a hammer texture mesh. Uh, question from one of my subscribers. Thanks for this amazing question. So here we go. So obviously at first it seems very simple. There are many ways to do a hammer texture in Blender, but to do a very pretty and beautiful hammer texture mesh. <laughs> right, so let's first create a ring. Very quick. Front view, after circle 9.1. Radius align to view. Here we are. Resolution 85. Great. Now, add per circle view radius 2, location 0. You can now hide the default cube. Here we are. Now, our circle resolution 45. Let's go to edit mode. Move this about here. Now, turn on the grid absolute snap magnet right here. These handles go here and there. This is pretty good. Something like this. Now lower these handles somewhere about here. This SX somewhere here. Exit edit mode. Save hammered metal mesh. Here we are. Now take the big circle. Geometry bevel object. Select this. Now edit mode on the big circle. And menu. Check the tilt 90 or minus 90. Depend your orientations. All right. Now we have a simple band ring here. Make a hammer texture mesh band ring, which is the request of the subscriber. Now these are all curves. Make a copy, preserve your original, hide the original. Now this I'll see becomes a mesh. We are going to isolate the outer faces. You can do that in edit mode, edit mode, side view, out Z for X-rays, transparency, B for box selection, go here, make it symmetrical. So here you can see have a bit more on the right. B, shift, remove the excess if needed. Now, front view, jump at one. C for circle selection. Shift, remove the inner vertices. Here we are. You should get something like this. The goal is simply to get this because we're going to sculpt. Yes. To get the best hammer texture for a mesh, you need to sculpt, which might be surprising, but believe me, I've tested many types of displacement and absolutely none gave a better result in a better time. Great, now make a control I, H. When you hide vertices in edit mode, in sculpt mode, there will be hidden also, which is great. Exit edit mode, save. You might want to do a vertex group, but it's not even needed. Change the matcap if you want to the red one, which is the clay one, which is really nice. The very classic matcap, it's lovely. Okay, now in sculpt mode, a bit of tweaking right at the beginning. We want dyno topology, yes. This message is because of the UV map. It's all right, okay. Dyno detail at one. Now brush, radius unit on scene. And let's go at point 0.25. Strength at point 0.6. You should be fine like this. Now comes the technique and the real work of art. So, what do we need to do? All right, so here we are. This should take you about five to ten minutes. Otherwise, you're doing something wrong. You're done. Save and be happy. Go to layouts again. All right, now. So. This looks cool, but obviously this is not so right. And this looks rather like a skin texture. So we're not quite there yet. Right, now comes the magic trick. Add modifier on the band, remesh. Remesh in about 0 0.2, 0 0.15. Depends on your topology and depends also on the strength and detail you want for your hammer texture. Maybe go at 0 0.13. And we still need to make a decimate modifier Go maybe at point 0.1. This is going to sharpen and flatten the hammer texture and really get us to that hammered look that we. So you can try a decimate at point 0.05 maybe also, depending on the look you want. Now, also about the shading. Check if you prefer flat or smooth, depending on your preference. All right, so here we are about making a hammer texture mesh. What affects the most the look of your texture is how you sculpt the cells with what strength, and then the tweaking of the remeshing and the decimate modifier. And cycle X, 18 seconds rendering. And here we have our perfect hammer texture mesh made in Blender. 
You can export this to SPL and 3D print it with no problem at all. We're going to add some decorations on the sides, some edges to our ring. So front view, add curve, circle, radius 91, center 000, align to the view, obviously, and let's move it a bit to the side here. Resolution, 85. Now here, we're going to use bevel profile. We're going to double click here, make something like this, double click again, like this, make a slight pyramid shape, depth 0.5, resolution 20. Now, orientation, control A, rotation. All right, this is looking pretty nice. Now, let's put it to the side right here. We'll tweak that a bit later. We can already make it a bit bigger like this. Add modifier mirror based on the band. Find the orientation, mine is Z. Okay, all right, now let's make the render of this to prove that this looks amazing. Okay, let's start with the basic add mesh plane, which is the ground. Location zero, size 320. Obviously, tweak the height to the ground right here. Remove the light here, delete. Now, HDR illumination. World tab, color, environment, texture, open. Select your favorite HDR. Here we are. Now, camera. I like this view. Out control zero. Tweak the camera position here. Let's have a preview right now. We obviously need to create the materials. Let's go to shading. Okay, so for the gold, new, metallic one, spectacular one, roughness zero. Don't forget to put smooth shading if you want smooth shading right here. Camera view. And input bevel on the normal. Samples 24, radius 0.2. Now, base color. Check your gold depending on your HDR. This might be good. You can use the ambient occlusion if you want. A drop the color here, connect the color again. Simple 24, distance 50, depends on your scene. Put the same material, call it gold, on the edges. If you like it like that, well, just use the same metal for the entire ring. Or if you want, copy it and bring it to a darker gold like this one, maybe a black rhodium plating or a dark steel casting. Now for the ground, new material, check the color you like, maybe a blue. You can also put the ambient occlusion here, plug in normal, add vector bump, plug in here, plug in height. Now add input texture coordinates to vector, add vector mapping in the middle. Now add a light point. Okay, so tweak the light position, size, power, strength, depending on your scene. Check the scale of the mapping on the floor, the scale of the mesograph texture, the strength of the bump, the strength of the roughness, because it changes a lot the look of the floor with the brushed metal. I will go at point one. We can copy our brushed texture to the gold material if we want to, plug into normal, and tweak as needed. Thanks, satellites. 18 seconds rendering. And here we have our perfect hammer texture mesh made in Blender. You can export this to SPL and 3D print it with no problem at all.